Uh, so I'm in Longjing right now. Uh, Longjing is the uh, not only the name of uh, probably China's most famous tea, but it's also the name of uh, the village that occupies that has the uh, most prized uh, Longjing called the Lion's Peak. This is the Longjing village. Uh, I don't mean to be all touristy, but I'm actually in because uh, this is a park basically. Uh, I come here because this is where the famous 18 tea trees are. It's behind me. Uh, so. These are the royal uh, tea trees that uh, the Emperor Tianlong wanted for his own stash. And uh, I would say these are probably the tea trees that made Longjing so famous. It basically pushed it to the number one tea in China. Uh, you actually had to pay a small admission fee to come in here. Uh, I haven't been here for a few years, but for this video purposes, I thought to, but it's, I don't like to come here because it's kind of touristy, but I cannot not come here uh, if I want to give you a overview of Longjing. So, um, you've probably seen this machine in the, my past videos before, but basically this is a machine that specializes in making just Longjing. So uh, long tea making, usually like the first step, the kill green step, now is all using machine. Uh, you're gonna see that uh, all long jing, like a good long jing, usually are uh, what we call semi handmade because you still need to finish it by hand. But kind of like the very rough step where you uh, are simply just cutting the enzymes, people usually use this machine. Uh, there's actually, they will usually actually sprinkle uh, a little bit of tea oil on the bottom of the. Um, the machine to grease it and uh, remember long jing it takes kind of like a flattening motion so this machine uh the reason it's specialized in long jing is because it mimics that uh motion uh if you can see this it's so different from making uh other green teas or uh tofu or see how little leaves uh it's in there it's a it's a Oh, so you can uh, uh, adjust the uh, the, uh, the amount of tea in here. So uh, this is just is uh, So you can see this is a little bit over 60 grams. So 60 grams of raw leaves um, gives you. This Longjing's percentage is how much? How much raw leaves do you need to make a tea? Next week, we'll do a so uh, for low it's about 4 to 4.5. If it's a rainy day, then it's 4.5 because uh, there's a lot of uh, basically water in tea. And uh, if it's sunny day, then it's 4. So so that was 70 grams of uh, raw leaves. So that gives you a little bit uh, over 15 grams of tea if you're lucky. So. And uh, I have to say, you know, this machine is uh, very, uh, is highly advocated by the uh, uh, people from Tea Research Center. So Longjing is in Hangzhou, and this is where the National Tea Research Center is. So Longjing actually has the uh, benefit of having the best uh, technical support, the scientific research. Uh, so Longjing is not only that uh, in the past it enjoyed like immense. Fame because the endorsements of famous people, including emperors, uh, but also in the modern day, you continue seeing like a different status of uh, of Longjing basically, because all the uh, kind of tea experts, their uh, main study is uh, around Longjing, like the uh, the tea the example they use basically. So when you first made the tea. You can see it's a little uh, greener, and right now it's very, very toasty if I smell the tea. And uh, uh, this one afterwards, you're gonna see he's actually gonna wrap it up and uh, to let the tea, because remember, this is just to kill the green, it's not finished yet. So he's actually going to let it, um, uh, the moisture to come out a little bit, and then he's gonna finish the tea by hand. Uh, hand making Longjing is uh, can still be done if you want to commission it. It costs four times the regular tea. I mean, Longjing is already very, very expensive. It's definitely one of the most expensive teas in China, and the price is very stable, by the way. It's not like uh, some other tea where the price fluctuates a lot, so even though it's expensive, but it's kind of uh, 
how do I say? Like it's not, it's 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 not stable. The, the market is not rational. Lonking has solid followers, solid supporters. Uh, it's expensive. It's very, very stable. And a handmade tea can cost four times as much. It's the same batch of tea, basically. So. You can see the uh, temperature here. So long team uh, cooking room temperature is slightly lower than the ocean. The ocean goes, so this is the temperature. It's 190 uh, degrees Celsius, whereas the ocean is actually uh, 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 above uh, 200. Uh, so this is the, uh, the control and this is the actual. So the actual right now is 194 and ideal is to uh, reach 190. <laughs> so he said he started doing this since he was 15, uh, but that was when it was everything was, you know, it was super communism, so everything was done uh, in a communal uh, facility. And uh, his first job was actually just to burn the logwood, and uh, when he was 16, uh, he started to, uh, to get on the walk. And uh, today, this year he's 60, so it's been over 40 years, 40, 45 years. <laughs> He's saying to my friend that <laughs> when he started making tea, uh, my friend who's also much older than me hasn't wasn't born yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh my god, this is so fascinating. It's it's really, really hard. And it's so chaotic too because it's very frustrating because I don't know, like, I just have the whole stance, like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and it's, and I don't know how to fix it. But basically, you know, he keeps telling me, you know, do this motion, that motion. But, but it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. The tea doesn't listen to me, you know, like, you can see the the tea is so flat in his hand it's so orderly that he can thrush it against the uh, the walk with such force and the tea wouldn't break but and and also like right now there's actually temperature like it's uh, he turned on the heat now because uh, uh, when I was doing it, it was just some residual heat and now the um, but when it was in my hand you know the tea was just everywhere uh, yeah see like it become much busy because of what I did <laughs> Uh, he said, uh, so this is the batch of tea I was doing earlier. He said, uh, right now it's still savable. If you let it sit for a little longer, you know, the heat will dry the tea even, even more. He said, then it'll become unsavable. Uh, he said, now it's not that busy. Oh. He said, like, the one I did, you can see, oh, by the way, this is what I'm talking about, the, the toothpick shape. So uh, it's actually shrank too much, and it's a little smaller, versus the one that he made. It's still very plump, and uh, has a meaty look into it, but it's flat. So I just want to show you the differences between uh, the different long jeans, basically. So over here, this is the uh, very early pick of Qun Ti Zhong, which means uh, basically just a group varietal. So this is the, the old original or the indigenous varieties of the region. Um, the it actually will have one that's even more tender looking of this one. But so this was the Longjing Forty Three, um, but this is a very late pick of it. Um, this is, uh, remember, this is already, today is already April 6th, so Longview 43 usually started picking very early, uh, it's like sometimes even before uh, March 20th, and this year they actually started picking like around the 10th, but then it snowed, so they stopped the picking and then pick it up again later that month, so, uh, and most tourists come and buy this, so the, all the early pick of this one has been bought off, uh, you can see it's much more even, the uh, in comparison to this one though this is a late pick of the original varietal this is this is just from recent days but i just want to show you so i want to show you two different things basically one is the difference between the different varietals uh sorry these two are not exactly comparable because they're two different picking grades but um these two uh both are old varieties but you can see the difference in just the picking so the early picks you can see the the bud is much more plum it's even more yellow in comparison to uh 
the greener ones. Um, it's a uh, uh, meteor, and if you pay close attention, you can see the tea hair as well. I mean, uh, in Longjing, all the tea hairs has fallen off because you keep rubbing it, but it'll congeal into little balls. And versus this one, you see very little hair, and uh, it has started to have more discoloration. So it's actually very, very easy to tell just the, the kind of just based on appearance alone, at least you can tell the picking grade of the tea. So I gotta show this really, really quickly. So what's in here is limestone. And you set the tea in a cloth bag and basically set on top of the sunny limestone. Uh, it's really dark, you can't see. Because it's rainy today, uh, and uh, it's not good It's not good to uh, to to open it up to, uh, to to show me, but I just wanted to show you. Uh, <laughs> He was like, you have to be quick so the moisture doesn't get in. Uh, I mean, but the very purpose of limestone is to absorb the additional moisture uh, from the tea or to, from the surrounding air to prevent the tea from uh, uh, basically rotten. I was saying that uh, tea region usually is not a very good place to keep tea because uh, it's very humid, especially right after the tea season. We're gonna enter summer, which is gonna be even uh, humider, like more, more, more humid. <laughs> and uh, the tea, the, remember the number one enemy for tea is moisture. Now, back in the days before China, we have, uh, uh, you know, air conditioner or uh, refrigeration, uh, using limestone to keep the tea dry is uh, uh, one of the main techniques basically. Uh, the, the step is called the show way. So uh, it's still considered more preferred than uh, uh, refrigeration because refrigeration is, uh, is a little controversial because it does keep the tea fresher for longer. However, for somebody who sells the tea, once you take the tea out and then the customer need to uh, travel with the tea, uh, it can create condensation which is really, really bad for the tea. However, I would still recommend that if you buy the tea uh, and then at home and then you're just gonna uh, drink the tea like you're already the end consumer uh, it's probably a pretty good idea to keep the tea in the refrigerator so uh, because the time that the tea will spend in and out of the fridge is, uh, is shorter uh, usually they will put uh, the tea in the limestone for about half a month uh, before they you know sell the tea to customer and uh, in general by the way uh, no tea is even though green tea yellow tea you want to consume it uh, fresh but no tea is considered the in its best shape when it's first made. Usually you want to wait for at least uh, uh, three weeks before you drink the tea. So, and and then afterwards he will put the tea in uh, with a small piece of uh, uh, limestone or the limestone powder and uh, that'll keep the tea fresh for a whole year so before the next tea season starts. Remember before tea become such a, 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 a profitable trade, people, the local people, the reason they make tea is because they drank tea. Now the um, uh, he was he was also recommending that if you keep it at home, just then just just keep it in the fridge because you only have so little tea. And uh, uh, but keeping it in the fridge, another risk. Uh, this might be a Chinese unique risk. Basically, you have other things in the fridge which uh, the the smell might get into tea. So if you have like a dedicated tea fridge, that would be the best. But, um, I am actually in the park of Tiger Run right now. So not only. So, so one of the things that um, Longjing tea enjoys so much uh, fame among all Chinese teas, I think has to do with how close it is to the city and uh, therefore like kind of close to all of its uh, very important patrons ever since the, uh, the old times. Now, the, uh, as a result, a lot of these, uh, uh, the, the, the tea lots or the uh, uh, well-known landmark places have all become kind of like a tourist attraction as well. So right now, uh, uh, Tiger Run also turned into a park, so uh, you have to purchase a admission fee to enter. Uh, it's not very expensive, but so I'm in, in here. Uh, not only uh, I've been having trouble finding uh, the Tiger Run teas. I've seen some flatland ones. I'm not sure if that's it. Uh, but anyway, so Tiger obviously was the, the fourth in ranking among all the uh, uh, Chinese teas and then, uh, sorry, among the Longjing teas. I think there might be some, some like, <laughs> foreigners <laughs> waving. Anyway, so so Tiger, that's the, uh, uh, the fourth in ranking among all the Longjings. But most importantly is it's Tiger 
Tiger Run has the number one water and uh, whenever people give example of uh, famous water pair with famous tea, I mean usually it's also local water with local tea, the famous pairing, usually people would give uh, Longjing and Tiger Run water as an example. So uh, another uh, like uh, well-known example would be the uh, Mengding Tea and the Yangtze River water. So I'm uh, really excited to get some Tiger Run water. Uh, it's really sweet. Usually you gotta let it rest for a little bit before you taste it, but I'm gonna have some. Over there is Tiger Run and you can see some of the uh, senior citizens of Hangzhou already carrying out some water. Uh, it is definitely a, a, a ritual or a routine for a lot of locals here to get uh, Tiger Run water. Usually you see the older people doing it because remember it is a park and it charges admission fee. However, uh, if you um, pass a certain age and like so, uh, you hold a, like a senior card, uh, the park admission fee is actually waived. So the, uh, the, the elderly of the household usually will come here and uh, fill up their bottles with uh, with Tiger Run water. Yeah. So uh, the Tiger Run water is supposed to be even too sweet for the uh, um, Longjing tea, usually they say that you, let, uh, you need to let it sit for a little while, for a few days before... Uh, uh, so uh, it's, it's, the line is really long, so I don't want to... I didn't want to... Uh, I didn't want to delay anybody, but supposedly you want to let the water to rest for a few days before you... Uh, uh, use it for tea, otherwise the sweetness is going to overpower the, the taste of tea. It is really sweet, I have to say. It is really sweet. Um, I'm not sure like how sweet it is because my memory of other water kind of fading. I did have uh, other pretty sweet water, uh, let's say in the uh, uh, Qishan in the, where Huaping is. Their water is pretty sweet too. But this is this is this is sweet. Like you can obviously taste the the sweetness in the water. And so over here, under the glass, this is actually where the uh, Tiger Run Spring actually is. And uh, but this one, uh, it's forbidden to, uh, uh, to 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 get water from this spot to uh, avoid contamination. So what it, uh, the government did was actually line uh, this water directed to where uh, we were getting the water there because uh, I don't know the, the, the details of it, but supposedly like over here is a. Uh, uh, like you can't get